As I am sure you are probably aware by now, Pokemon Sword and Shield's very first expansion, the Isle of Armor, has now officially released, and it brings a bunch of new added content to the Generation 8 games. The most notable piece of content arguably outside of Pokemon following you are the two new legendary Pokemon Cubfu and Urshifu that the expansion revolves around. These two Pokemon are pretty interesting, so interesting in fact, that they might actually be connected to the Sinnoh region and the inevitable future Diamond and Pearl remakes whenever they happen, and that is what this video is going to be all about. Fair warning though, as this video will contain spoilers for the Isle of Armor just in case you haven't played it yet, so consider yourself warned, but if you are okay with that, then let's go ahead and get into it. So ever since we were first introduced to Cubfu and Urshifu when the expansions were first revealed, well before they were even released, one of the most interesting details that was specified about them is the fact that they're not actually from the Gala region. Well, I guess they were technically originally, but a long time ago they migrated away to some faraway region and they live in the mountains in some distant land. Now obviously any time we hear about a Pokemon from an unspecified, unknown faraway region it is interesting, but when it comes to these guys we're dealing with legendary Pokemon and not only that, but effectively the box art legendaries for this Isle of Armor expansion, which makes it all the more curious seeing as how important these Pokemon truly are. So, so far, what we know about Cubfu and Urshifu is that A, they are from another region, B, they live in the mountains in that other region, and C, as an addition to all of that, we can clearly see that they have Asian origins. Cubfu literally comes from Kung Fu, Urshifu is an extension of that, obviously you've got the dojo on the Isle of Armor. All of this expansion centers around a very Chinese slash Asian type of feel, which is very important in terms of Cubfu's origins and where it could potentially come from. While there is no 100% concrete rule that an Asian-inspired Pokemon would have to come from an Asian-inspired region, for instance, those two things usually do go hand in hand, and it's why you see more American Pokemon like Braviary in Unova, for instance, or why you see more French-inspired Pokemon like Aromatisse come from the Kalos region. So if Cubfu and Urshifu have Asian origins, especially in the UK-inspired Galar of all places, that definitely raises an eyebrow and it's something to take note of as we continue to try and figure out where these Pokemon truly are from. As of this point in time, we have officially seen four Asian-inspired regions in Pokemon, those being the four Japanese-based ones, Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, and Sinnoh. So this could potentially narrow down our search a little bit as we go along long and continue to look for evidence. Speaking of Sinnoh though, I might as well let the cat out of the bag now because I firmly believe that both Cubfu and Urshifu are actually from the Sinnoh region and could even have a connection to the inevitable upcoming Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes. Based on the evidence we have gone over so far, Sinnoh would be a perfect fit for Cubfu and Urshifu. Number one, it is another region outside of Galar, obviously. Number two, it is Asian-inspired to accommodate Cubfu and Urshifu's Asian origins. And number three, it is very mountainous, as it plays home to one of the most iconic mountains in all the Pokemon world, Mount Coronet, which could serve as the perfect mountain environment that is described for Urshifu as where it originally came from. It doesn't just stop there though, because there is yet another piece of evidence that has to do with Urshifu specifically that really pushes it over the edge in my opinion and solidifies this idea that these Pokemon do in fact originate from the Sinnoh region. Once you evolve Cubfu into Urshifu in either the Tower of Waters or the Tower of Darkness, your next step is to get it to Gigantamax by giving it some Max Soup, except there's one problem because apparently Urshifu does not like the taste of Max Soup at all. This is why you have to go find a certain something, as the game calls it, to put into the max soup to make it taste a little better, which will actually make Urshifu want to eat it and therefore be able to Gigantamax. 
sex. And it just so happens that this certain something is none other than honey. Now, that might sound kind of like a basic thing, but the reason why it's so important is because the concept of honey, the item and the way it's used in the Pokemon world, was introduced in Generation 4 in the Sinnoh region with the slathering of honey onto trees in order to attract Pokemon. And this idea becomes even more significant when you consider the fact that the place that you end up getting the honey for Urshifu from in the game is from Vespaquin, who is a Pokemon that was introduced in the Sinnoh region. Now you might say that this is all just a coincidence, or the reason why honey is used is because Urshifu is a bear Pokemon, and bears love honey, but in my opinion, all of this comes together too perfectly, way too perfectly just to be a coincidence, especially because it is all Sinnoh themed, and obviously the idea of Sinnoh remakes has reached a fever pitch recently, so it just seems to be a little bit too coincidental to be an actual coincidence. It even seems a little suspect that the DLC where this is all occurring released on the same day as an announcement that there is going to be an announcement for a very likely new Pokemon game, possibly even Sinnoh remakes, next week. The fact that those two happened in tandem with all of this occurring in the DLC itself surrounding Sinnoh, once again, seems to be a little bit too coincidental to just be a coincidence. Whatever is announced next week may or may not be Diamond and Pearl remakes, but I think you guys get what I'm driving at here. All of this is just fitting together too perfectly to not mean something. And finally, we come to the point of how Urshifu could actually be connected to those Diamond and Pearl remakes. In the process of getting the honey for Urshifu after you defeat the Dynamax Vespaquin and actually obtain its honey to put in the Max Soup, Hop makes sort of an offhand comment about how the honey seems to be tied to Dynamaxing and the Max Mushrooms that you used to make the Max Soup earlier in the game seem to be tied to Gigantamaxing, and how there seems to be a lot more to this whole idea that is yet to be learned. He makes this statement in an almost cryptic sort of nature, and it actually got me thinking. What if this is the way that they actually bring the Gigantamax and Dynamax concept to the Sinnoh remakes? We obviously know that Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing, much like Z-Moves or Mega Evolution, is the big new feature for this generation, so it makes sense that they would want to have it in Sinnoh Remakes if Sinnoh Remakes happen in this generation. There's just one problem with that, and that is that the Dynamax phenomenon is unique to Galar specifically, so it can't really happen naturally anywhere else but there. However, if you had a specific item like Max Honey or Max Mushrooms that you could then make into a Max Soup and give to a Pokemon, that could act as a workaround to allow Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing in the Sinnoh region when normally it is a phenomenon exclusive to Galar, thereby extending this generation's new feature to the next set of games in this generation, the Diamond and Pearl remakes. So, could Kupfu and Urshifu actually be from the Sinnoh region, and could we see them make an appearance in the Diamond and Pearl remakes, and could Gigantamaxing and Dynamaxing be brought over to the Sinnoh games with the help of the Max Honey and the Max Mushrooms that were introduced in the Isle of Armor? Well, as of right now, it is just a theory, so you're gonna have to let me know what you think of this theory in the comments below, and be sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Also, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet for plenty more Pokemon content all the time, including lots more content on the Isle of Armor specifically. I've got a lot of really fun stuff planned for you guys, and if you would like to support the channel further to support videos like this, you can check out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and check out my Pokemon Cardinal project, which is very much appreciated. With that being said though, I'll be back on Saturday with yet another Isle of Armor video, so in the meantime, I hope you guys are having fun fun with the DLC. I hope you know I love you guys very much, and until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.